one of the things that we've worked on as a community, which has just organically grown out of our community, is um, the looking at the possibility of creating a new timeline. So is there an exoconscious timeline that we are, as Yvonne said, intentionally uh, manifesting, intentionally creating? And what does that mean? And how does that differ from um, a timeline of threat or fear? How, how does the exoconscious timeline differ from that? And so I wanted to bring Nick in because he's he's done some hands-on work that is all about um, actually putting the tools together through his meditation, which we are also going to put up on the uh, Exoconscious Humans U- YouTube, but through a meditation and through healing practices of, of bringing together that timeline that is human created, co-created with beings like the Council of Eight. And um, just have Nick share some of his, some of his wisdom around that that technical work because it is technical. (laughs) I'm Nick. Um, I live in Scottsdale, Arizona. Um, I've been in this group, I think since the beginning of it, I decided that I was interested um, by the way I'm old and I've about, (laughs) I've been doing this stuff uh, for a while. And um, Anyway, I had decided that I wanted to get in touch with more multidimensional kind of people. Um, And the very next day, I got an email about this group was forming. uh, And so I jumped on that um, right away. And that's how I got here. Um, Now, this um, just to give you some quick background, um, I had a lot of things that have uh, occurred in my life. Um, that I didn't really have solid confirmation of. And being part of this group brought me confirmation for all kinds of things. But I am a a person who um, is more a receiver than a transmitter, although I know that's kind of impossible. But um, I, I receive a lot of information and um, I get information from all kinds of sources, um, mostly spiritually things, in other dimensions, that, that kind of stuff. When we got to know Kevin and what was going on, uh, one of the first things I did was I bought Kevin's book. Well, hey, that's really cool. Uh, now I understand what Kevin is doing. I have been kind of an open person all my life and um i have a networking background i don't know if i worked for at&t for a long time i'm all about networks and that's what this group is and this group um has its own network and it's connected to other networks and for example um my my view of the council of eight is that it is a network and it is linked now to this network don't really channel anybody um from the council of eight but i get information from them clearly i did get um, a direct connection to edgar mitchell who very rudely busted into my Uh, meditation one day and announced himself and gave me a command. Uh, (laughs) uh, But I'm kind of used to that. Um, I've been an energy healer for a long time, and I I got into that because I had been meditating, and then suddenly a big booming voice told me to go and become a Reiki master, so I did that, and that was many, many years ago. Anyhow, um, so what I, I, I find that is terrific because my whole um, life has been following clues. And I get clues from all over the place. And um, when I follow them, I get more information. And it takes me to places that I never would have expected. So I think that's what's kind of going on here. Uh, Someone in this group introduces an idea. And then suddenly, after we get done discussing it, by the time we ever get back together again, 
everyone has gotten information about that subject. And it's kind of odd, like Karen, uh, I can tell you that um, I used to get bits of information for Karen. So I would tell her what that was. Now, I, I hadn't gotten anything for a long time. And so I said to whoever it was I was trying to communicate with at the time, because I don't take down names. And, you know, I just take it from where it comes. It's like I accept it. So anyway, so I said, how come you give me any information about Karen anymore? And they said, basically, she has grown up. She gets her own now. <laughs> And um, I think that's kind of what's going on here. So we're all making contributions to each other and to our overall, uh, if you would, mission um, together. And it's just a really nice, uh, comfortable uh, community, and it's extremely helpful. Oh, thanks, Nick. Um, let's let's wrap up by just um, briefly touching on something that's very important to our community because we identify ourselves as exoconscious humans. So we're not necessarily identifying ourselves as extraterrestrials or as some kind of a hybrid species or a walk-in. We're identifying ourselves as exoconscious humans that, that, that we access these multi-dimensions consciously and are able to bring back information because of that identity. We also co-create with extraterrestrials and multidimensionals and spiritual beings. So the co-creation process to us is we as, as exoconscious humans give information to multidimensional beings that they need because we're part of them. So it's not like the kind of the classic experiencer type situation where, you know, well, they're so much more intelligent than we are. They know so much more than we do. We're just kindergartners here on earth. We really don't go by that philosophy. We go by the philosophy that they come from our heart, as Gary's saying, but we also have phenomenal critical thinking abilities, creativity abilities. And that we need to be giving our information back to, let's say, the Council of Eight or back to um, another dimension, back to Earth beings that we want to communicate with. So let's just do a real quick round robin to wrap up and say, if there's one thing that you would like to share with all of the ETs, like the Council of Eight, the multidimensional beings we work with the um, spiritual beings that, because many of us work with spiritual beings, what, what would be the one thing that we would offer them as humans, as exoconscious humans, as information that we would like to give to them to assist with reveal or disclosure or whatever you want to call it, but moving, advancing exoconscious humans into this, this next phase, what, what would be the one piece of advice that we as a human would want to give to these beings? I think um, the first thing that comes to my mind um, is the creation of awareness. Um, yes. We're not aware of everything that goes on, and we're all quite grateful for the information that we get. <clears throat> on the other hand, we can deliver information to these people. and. That helps them focus on things that are important to their mission. Although it's not completely clear to me what their total mission is, um, it is clear to me that they're trying to um, mold their attention to us to have us achieve together things that are of, uh, I guess, higher level concern. So I think that's it. We, we can make them aware. The, the best message that we can give them is that the same thing as Nick said, the awareness, we want them to reveal themselves to people, but not to everyone right away. They should be revealing themselves to the people who are interested in finding out more, people who want to know the truth, 
and people who are willing to get involved and spread this truth out and show other people. And I, and that's my purpose in life. I mean, I after my experiences, I've decided that my sole purpose in life is to help reveal the truth to other people. And that's why I started my private CE5 groups. And the people that come to my groups are serious researchers and psychologists, QHHT therapists, all kinds of people that are serious into this communication with multidimensional beings. There are so many civilizations out there, not just one or two. They all have different agendas. We're a lab for most of the people. But what happened with me, when I sat down on a chair to do a meditation in my own private CE5 one night, I decided that it would be a good idea that I would open myself up and allow them to look at my hard drive and see who I am and see where I've been and see what information I have in my brain that they could actually use telepathically. Within only less than a minute, I had flashes going off in my head. I opened my eyes and right next to my chair, three feet away, was a big orange basketball floating above the ground about a foot high. And it was rotating and scintillating, beautiful red orb. And then it just spun into a corkscrew up into the sky and dissolved into red orange sparks. I cried. This is the type of communication that we are doing as exoconscious humans. Anything that we can do to make contact and just push the ball a little closer towards the goalposts is what we're all about. That's scary. So, Kevin, would you want to comment? Uh, yeah, I think that the uh, certainly the Council of Eight, they enjoy the interaction with us. We, I think I've said this before, I'm a student of theirs. And now they're asking things of their students. So they're asking me to share the information. I share the information with the exo conscious community. And everybody here has spoken about how we all learn together by sharing the information. Like Nick said, the information comes into him. And I had the exact same message for Karen at one point where she doesn't need uh, me as much anymore because she's grown up. She's opened up to the I fact. I still need you, Kevin. So, <laughs> So conscious human. So yeah, they're happy that uh, we are um, pioneers in communicating with our ET star family. So I think it's uh, very exciting times ahead. And because we have a group that have two-way conversations with many modalities of contact that we all understand, then uh, we can be the leaders in relation to working towards the reveal globally of our ET staff, families, ambassadors. And I think that's where we will lead the way. There are many groups working towards this. Many groups have been working for decades towards this. But now it's coming to a head. And uh, that I think that's the reasoning for the exo-conscious community. And interesting, again, that Nick mentioned uh, uh, Edgar Mitchell. I channeled Edgar Mitchell. I think it's, I don't know, it's in that book that uh, Kathleen Marden published. But uh, he, he contacted me initially to get in touch with Rebecca. So he's there. We know that the higher levels of consciousness, we still exist. We have the abilities and we all have the abilities, not just the exo-conscious humans, but all humans have these abilities. They're just skills and we have to learn them. It's as simple as that. So I think it's exciting times ahead. Thanks, Kevin. Karen. <laughs> <laughs> Oh boy, uh, I I I'm, what the information I get is really that we are a kind of a microcosm within our group of what's supposed to happen on a macro level. So for me and my experience, I'm supposed to extrapolate that out to community and then internationally. I don't know, but the information that's been shared today, for example, my experience. Um, I was given assistance with both Nick and Kevin with messaging to help me confirm because I'm, you know, not everybody is going to be a psychologist coming into this, working with people, and they can then go out and, and try to touch them in some way. That's that's what I get to do. But I don't have to do it in a really specific way that might be intimidating to them, that that I can introduce it, this interdimensional uh, ability, like Mary Rodwell talks about, to to exist on different levels that, that, that they can then be helped. So my message to our guides, 
would be at that point, confirm for them, help them have an experience that is positive and benevolent because the threat narrative is the other timeline. And part of the channeled information would be from Kevin was that there would be two timelines. And I studied this quite extensively that, okay, how do we help co-create the other timeline where humanity stays human, but also co-creates to awaken and advance and be enlightened with other beings on whatever level. And I was given information to confirm to me from Nick about the angelic realm, which was my experience from Kevin with the council. These became benevolent for me so that I could go, oh, I'm getting all this other information out here, but I can now say there's another timeline running parallel here. And the information was that it would converge at some point. Well, we've got to be strong enough on this timeline to pull enough people who want that timeline to have another place to go. So my, 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 request or however you want to verbalize it would be that when I myself and any of us who've been tasked, and that's how I feel, to help people with what could be an ontological shock to them because they're either religion or just their their whole uh, culture of reality is now brought into question that it's not a threatening situation. It's an enlightening situation. It's an advancement. It's an activation. And we need them to come in at that point. That's my request. So Aurora or Yvonne, would you like to give guidance to the beans? Offer your guidance. <laughs> um. Actually, as I was listening to everybody talking, this thought sort of came to me. And it, it's not about advice to the beings, but it's actually something that has been emphasized to me, at least in uh, some of the contexts that I've had. Um, you know, frequently we have, and, you know, not just us in this group, but just in general as human beings, we have this tendency to look up to beings that we perceive to be more advanced than, than us, more spiritual and so on. And one of the things that has been communicated to me is that the interaction between us and ETs is actually a two-way street. And yes, we are remembering, they're helping us to remember things that we've forgotten, that we already know. But at the same time, they also learn from our experiences here because we make this telepathic connection that goes both ways. And one of the most important things that um, has been emphasized to me was their gratitude. Their gratitude for our willingness, in a sense, to have these heavy experiences that aren't necessarily always, you know, blissful and happy and kumbaya, you know, we dismiss those as, oh, I'm not, you know, where I want to be. Some, you know, I'm not being spiritual right now because I'm feeling angry with somebody. Those experiences are valued just as much as our joy and happiness. There's no distinction between the two. To me, it seems that it would be um, very helpful for us to remember that, that it doesn't really say anything about our, our development if we find ourselves in a situation where maybe we're not, you know, at the, the high frequency that everybody, you know, seems to aspire to. There really is no difference between feeling sad and feeling happy. We are still in contact with these beings. We have elevated our frequency, regardless of what state of mind you're in at any given moment. And they are grateful. They really are. They are grateful for it is a hardship to be here. They are grateful for the hardship that we are going through and for sharing whatever it is that we're learning here with them because they don't have the opportunity to have these lessons in 3D, at least not at this point in time. So yeah, that's just kind of something to keep in mind, I think, for all of us, that it's okay. It's okay. Thanks, Aurora. It's beautiful. Yvonne. Oh, wow. What a request. Um, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so 
So, and, and this is uh, part and parcel of the questions that you, Rebecca, continue to ask us to, you know, have us look a little deeper <laughs> and become more conscious in where we are having these communications. So for the purpose of this question right now, in terms of what I would like to bring into the field to communicate with um, the benevolent, you know, beings that are assisting and part of our world here is that um, any assistance to be able to help expand the consciousness of awareness of love and conscious co-creation, especially around mechanical intelligence. It's not artificial intelligence. I don't think there's such a thing as artificial intelligence. There's human, organic, and there's all different kinds, but I'm looking at mechanical things that come through machines like technology. We're on this leap of really becoming more and more involved with technology in the unseen realms. So any assistance that we can have in expanding our loving awareness and ownership of that space within our own consciousness so that the fear narratives and timelines and programs um, that are being seeded, that there is an equal, if not more beautiful seeding of loving awareness of how we can co-create even with our own cell phones, our own uh, computers, our own Zoom rooms, that we really are um, working in this realm and have the ability as humans exoconscious humans just as humans where we put our loving of focus and attention this is where the love goes and so any assistance in that and inspiration to be able to have that would be greatly appreciated yeah thank you so much i just want to also let our audience know that um the wisdom that's pouring and the wisdom and heart and intellect that's pouring from this group is going to also be available on our exoconscious inform um, program that we're going to be doing weekly. So weekly, we're going to bring these wonderful perspectives that you just had a had a, a, a peek into how our group functions. We're going to bring those forward every week and be addressing different topics that are part of Earth life. Things that are are affecting Earth life could be could be weather, could be the sun, it could be beans, it could be political disclosure, it could be sociological issues, could could be religion. Are these beings angels or demons? There's a big there's a big uh, discussion about that right now. That I'm sure the exoconscious humans are going to have a lot to say about that. And um, so we're going to be bringing our, 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 our wisdom and our intellect and, and our heart into this, this very important discussion weekly. So we'll be putting up on the screen the um, link to the website, exoconscioushumans.com, where you can find our, we call ourselves experts with an X, experts and experiencers. And we'll be um, guiding that weekly discussion. And thank you for joining us. And we hope to see you back. Please subscribe or join our channel. Thank you so much for being with us.